The first presenter of this session is Arthur. Arthur, I think that in this uh, audience need no introduction, and he he's here to tell us how we'll uh, not privatize but modularize the space. So I'm going to. Uh, well, actually, what I want to do is to give you an overview about uh, LibreCube and the activities with it um, since last, over the last year, and what we're going to do. So the whole idea is to get you interested in working with LibreCube. So it's a kind of recruitment process. You're here now. And it's an open source recruitment, meaning that um, you work with us, we pay you nothing. So, <laughs> okay, so let's start. So LibreCube is uh, based on these three pillars. So open source everything, meaning that uh, all the things that we produce will be open source, uh, but also all the tools that we use to do those product, products and projects are open source so that really everyone can contribute. Um, we rely on space standards as much as possible because Standards are done by, created by people that put a lot of time and uh, brain power into it most of the time. So it makes uh, sense to tap on this knowledge. And then we have this reference architecture, which is a bit like uh, that's Lego Mindstorm maybe. So the idea behind this is that um, many systems share uh, similar components like a power system or a communication system you have on, uh, on, on various uh, systems like drones and rovers as well. So if we have a catalog of these modular uh, components available, then we can just, you can just go and take the things that you need and then plug it together to form your system. And yeah, I agree, it's not the most beautiful rover, uh, but I think you get the idea. So what have we done over the last year? Um, so one thing is the SLE user. Uh, which is, uh, was already presented yesterday by Milenko, the, uh, the SLE provider part actually, and the SLE user, so it's the Spacelink extension. What is, uh, what is, what is Spacelink extension? It's an extension of the Spacelink. Spacelink is happening here. You're familiar with this. So you upload commands and you receive uh, telemetry. And then in the ground station, you would have a SLE provider that was presented yesterday that basically uh, takes those frames that you receive here and encapsulates them. So it's a kind of container for your frames to send it over a terrestrial network. So you're not sending uh, raw data or audio files, you're sending frames. It's very bandwidth efficient. Um, yeah, so this is Spacelink and this is your SLE part. Um, as I say, it's a container ring, you take your input stream and it's not there's no uh, requirement on what kind of frames, how they should look like. You can encapsulate AX25, but uh, it's better to use CZSDS frames. Um, uh, but it's actually, it actually doesn't matter. So the way is that the, this gets, uh, gets some additional information to be sent over the internet. And um, yeah, you might think, uh, why should I, uh, what is the benefit of using this? Well, the fact is uh, all space agencies are using SLE to uh, use the stations of the other agency. And all commercial provider have a SLE provider. So it's, this is an example of a satellite network, uh, uh, sorry, a ground station network uh, from ESA. So all these dots here are uh, ground stations and the ESA center, the operation center in Darmstadt is connecting to each of these ground stations that they need to conduct a pass and get the telemetry. Um, yeah, so this is working. And what we did is to write a SLE user that you can then use to connect to any of these stations, um, which is basically this side. We didn't, luckily we didn't have to uh, start from zero, so we found there's an other implementation of this that uh, they solved all this stuff here, ASN1 notation and so on. It's a little bit tricky. So we ported it to Python 3, cleaned the code, and that's basically how you write how you would write uh, and use this API. So very simple to use and you can connect uh, to, for example, an ESA station if they allow you and give you all the, uh, the, the, the ident uh, passwords and so. 
The, the other thing is we did link predict. It's similar to what uh, Priyanka uh, presented yesterday. So the idea is, uh, is the same. We want to have um, to, to get the link budget for, um, for changing conditions, for a variation in, in all of um, these properties. So a link is always works like this. You have an emitter of some signal and you have a receiving part. And through this pass here, your signal gets a little bit increased. There might be some gain, but most of the time you lost uh, signal strength and then you receive something here at the receiver. And uh, it's always like this. So, but you have different components uh, with different properties, but they share similarities. And so you would basically create a link budget like this, that you uh, create um, objects of all this with different properties. And for example, the transmitter has a certain output power, but this can be made uh, depending on time. So you can have a time-changing output power. Same for the geometry. We don't restrict you to use any kind of uh, geometry. You just need to implement a class that has a get range method. How you implement it is up to you. We have a TLE example. Um, but yeah, it's really flexible. And I have an example here on, I did one of the passes or observations from the Sutnox network. I simulated it, um, a ground station and then one of the CubeSats. You can see it's all green, yeah, because yeah, you are very oversized, all of your stations. Yeah, we learned yesterday, bigger antennas are better and you use the very uh, big uh, gains and so on. So it's all green. But for the cluster mission at ESA, for example, they have a problem that uh, there's a, they don't have much power left. And for them, it's very critical. Um, for us, it's very critical to, uh, to know which passes we can take to actually download data. Okay. Next project, um, Pluto to Python. So um, Pluto is um, it's a standard um, from ECSS. Um, and this standard describes um, a domain-specific language to be used for testing and operations. So that's basically how uh, this pr uh, procedure would look like. It's like a recipe that, uh, that you formulate and it tells what the machine should do. So you trigger some actions and you read some telemetry. So this is basically the, the, the language. And the advantage to use a domain-specific language as opposed to a general purpose language is that you restrict the syntax and thereby you have, uh, yeah, you leave room for less bugs and it's easier to read for operators. Yeah? Uh, actually, it's, uh, it's uh, plain English, so you, uh, you can read it, but it's also machine interpretable um, by doing this parsing. So we wrote a parser that parses this into Python code. This code is not very Pythonic and you're going, not going to use it as such, but this is your input to your automation system. And this was a Google Summer of Code uh, activity, uh, very much fun. Then SpaceCan, I presented already this morning, so um, just quickly going through it, but there's also the hardware outside on the black table. Uh, you're free to plug in your laptop, connect with it and play around. And the whole idea was to present to create a very reliable um, monitoring bus and system, system bus for exchange of telecommands and telemetry. Yeah, I see the excitement in your faces, so that's real stuff that you can uh, grab from outside and you can download it and reproduce in your lab. In your lab. So, more of this is coming, so it's, we have some ideas for, for other things to do. Uh, it's not an exhaustive list, but these are the projects that are going to kick off soon. So this is file delivery protocol. This is a CCSDS standard, which basically is even from the end of late 90s. So it's hot stuff. Now it's, like, it's really like FTP. So the idea is to uplink, um, yeah, d so downlink images or, or s large science data from a satellite or, and uplink a list of telecommands. So basically sending files back and forth. And uh, you might think that, wow, that, that should be there already, but actually it's not. This is something that's happening right now. So operations is moving towards file-based operations. So one of the advantages, if you join this project and you can write this in your CV, I think you have, that's, is good. Yeah. So <laughs> and yeah, that's just basically how it works. It segments it and uh, uses uh, other layer, 
uh, layers on the bottom, CCSDS. And you can do some hopping of these files from one user to the other, to your remote entity then. Next thing, uh, there's two more projects I'm going to present that we want to kick off. One is this one new CubeSat structure. There's so many around, right? Everyone has their CubeSat structure. But one thing is not there yet, and this is remarkable, I find. So what, why are CubeSats so successful? It's because they are standardized. They have a standard format that you can put them in any in these deployers and attach it to any kind of rocket and even the ISS. But, so from the outside, standard. But the inside is basically everyone is doing it different. So imagine you have a structure where you can take your PC, uh, the, 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 the board stack, and just slide it in and lock it. Yeah? And then if you find out that, uh, oh, there's something wrong, then you take the, the backup stack that you have, take this out and plug this in, like that. So that's the whole idea. I'm not very good at mechanical design, probably some of you are, then do that. And then the other thing is very critical, is the power system. Uh, this must work, yeah? Without power system, you can launch a stone. Um, and we want to just build a very basic but very robust power system that just doesn't break, at least uh, single point failure tolerant. And I know many of you design uh, power systems and, and other systems, so it would be great to have you at least looking at this repository and look how we do and maybe find some things that you would like to make more robust. But just to tell you, everything is already redundant and we are building this up now in the lab, some prototypes, and would be great to, uh, to have you involved. So how to get involved is, uh, yeah, how get on board is it's very simple. You just go to the website, you find all the information there. And uh, you have a smartphone, you have a laptop, so please, now, bookmark this website. <laughs> Thanks. Wow, I stick to the time. <laughs> we have a question here. There. Uh, can you go back to the link budget uh, yep. slide? Link budget, yes. Okay, so uh, what exactly have you developed here? Is it like a Python library? Exactly, it's a, a Python package which basically forms your API. And uh, we did this because there was nothing else open source on them uh, that we found. Um, there's something called, well, there's the spreadsheet from Jan King, the Excel spreadsheet. And then there's one tool, I think it's called PyLink, uh, which basically took this Excel sheet, realizes that those are just connected cells that lead to a result. So it's a direct uh, acyclic graph, as, they call, uh, as the term is. So basically it mimics this. You ent enter your data and you get a result. But this is fully dynamic. So you supply a time range and you can plot the link budget. And this is like uh, the use of the library? Like You've built a Python library for this? Or does Pip it install. Yeah, but I mean, what, what benefit do I get instead of just uh, defining my variables and then uh, like for the link budget, I can just uh, make a function uh, to input these variables and then with uh, matplotlib, I can plot everything, right? Yeah, it's maybe more, um, uh, so you don't have to start thinking about uh, all the various components because basically we took a textbook or several textbooks and realized that also the naming is somehow different uh, but the, 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 the split up is always the same. The components they use, uh, the factors. So you have uh, atmospheric losses. That's the atmospheric loss would for example be uh, this is all part of the medium losses. Actually, this is 
these are all objects, inst instantiated classes, and this is a list which contains objects. And um, yeah. Yeah, but the result just runs a, a function of, uh, of all these variables, and uh, it's just an equation, right? Exactly. I mean, well, it includes like um, all these variables. I mean, what stops me from uh, instead of uh, installing this library of just running the equation myself? Um. Like, like uh, I don't think it saves a lot. No, in the end, it's some, it's some additions and multiplications. So, of course, you can do this by, uh, by hand as well. Yeah. Because a link budget in the end is very simple. Yeah. You, if you work in dBs, you add gains and minus losses. But this makes it modular and uh, more easy to work with. Um, because other people can, people can work on this geometry. We have a TLE provider, or TLE geometry, that you supply the TLE data of your satellite. And it calculates automatically the range then. Um, yeah. Thank it's you. API. That's the beautiness of API. That's what we introduced here. Or if you want to automate it and have it loop. And automation, yes. Any other questions? Here, this, there, there, there's a question. It's not raising the hand, but I see questions in the eye. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I give you a uh, five euro <laughs> for a question. <laughs> How about it? <laughs> but you must be a student. You must be a student. Uh, <laughs> can I ask a question for free then? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so you say these uh, various components here are classes. Are, do you have the example implementations or uh, do they have to be implemented by the user? Or how is it? Uh, for example, for the, the atmospheric budget. losses. Is it already implemented? Uh, uh, like uh, for the GRLEO, I remember the guys were implementing some ITU standard models for atmosphere. Yeah. And, uh, you can do this. We, le we tried with the ITU, but it, there's a package for this, but it became very slow, so we kicked it out because the atmospheric loss for UHF is only uh, max maximum a dB. But this intended also to be used for other frequencies like KA band, and then becomes an issue. Uh, but maybe you can find a smarter way to. Uh, to calculate or estimate the, uh, the thing. So who is going to, um, to work on the one U CubeSat structure where you can put in your stack? Because I have this idea since two years and uh, I need someone, a volunteer, come, yeah, yeah? Okay, it goes to you, good. <laughs> Finally. No, he's volunteering for doing the mechanical design of the one U, right? Good. Power system? <laughs> Some of you are working on power system. Who's working on power system? Please raise your hands. There were more people. They're outside. Oh, great. <laughs> um. okay. Yep. <laughs> okay, good. H hold them. Yeah. We do have a question down yep. here. You have all these tools, are they integrate with Zepnox, for example? Uh, well, we are, I think we are on the way to uh, try it with the, the SLE user to uh, uh, integrate this with Zepnox, uh, to give it a try, yeah. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have just one very curious question. When I do my link budgets, uh, my link budgets also help me once they are done. So to, to me, link budget is not a one-time shot. It is, a, it, it is actually a revisiting process, mm -hmm. which tells me how my circuit is coming up. So link budget also gives me characteristics of few of my electrical components. For example, low noise amplifier, power amplifiers that I define inside, length of my lines in the circuit, uh, my antenna length, antenna dimensions, all this. So is, uh, is your package gives all these characteristics at the end of uh, once it's executed? Uh, to me, that is a big help. The same question now in one sentence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, what was the question? If if everything can be. Uh, so question is if uh, when I do currently my link budget. Yeah. Uh, what I get out uh, is not just the calculations of the signal, but also characteristics of the electronic components that I should look out uh, of the shelf or wherever. But uh, I I'm very clear with the components that I want to use. Does this? Uh, it, it prints out not only uh, the link budget but all the steps, all the calculations yes. that are being, uh, all the small results that are being uh, calculated. The link budget is just uh, the end result, but yeah. you get all the information. Okay. It's a kind of dictionary that's being created. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. See you outside for coffee uh, uh, if you want to talk with me. Is or more questions? I hear Thanks. people talking over there. <laughs>